Hi everyone and welcome to today's Biology Daily Booster. This is number 19 in our Paper 2 series and it is still advanced information listed topics for both Foundation Biology and Higher Biology. What we're going to have a look at then are some of the non-communicable diseases and their causes. Starting off then we're going to have a look at smoking. Hopefully we know from lower down the school that there are four key things in cigarettes that are pretty bad for our health. First one is tar, which collects in the lungs and it is carcinogenic. Now anything that is carcinogenic just means that it has a link to causing cancer. So carcinogenic is bad because it leads to cancer. Nicotine is an addictive drug that's going to affect your nervous system leading to a faster heartbeat, narrower blood vessels. Carbon monoxide, this is going to bind irreversibly to the haemoglobin, meaning less oxygen can be transported and therefore your heart has to work harder to supply your cells with oxygen. And the particulates, which are just small pieces of solid that become engulfed by the white blood cells. As a result of that, we release an enzyme and that weakens the walls of the alveoli, leading to a condition called emphysema, which affects your ability to get enough oxygen into your body again. Second one, alcohol consumption. The key thing in alcohol that's our problem is the alcohol ethanol, and it affects our nervous system. It's what we refer to as a depressant, which means it slows down the body's reactions. We can divide up the effects of alcohol into two categories, short-term and long-term effects. Short-term effects, what you basically experience while the alcohol is still in your body, Blurred vision, loss of balance, slower reaction times, change in behaviour, all of those basically when you've consumed alcohol. Long term effects are the more serious ones because these are the ones that if you've used alcohol at a reasonable level for a longer period of time, you can start to see these. Cirrhosis, which is where your healthy liver cells have been replaced by fat and fibrous tissue, so your liver is far less effective at removing all of these chemicals that it should be. You can get stomach ulcers, very painful, heart disease and brain damage. So quite serious long term effects there of continued alcohol use. We're going to spend the majority of our booster focusing on what we refer to as cardiovascular diseases or CVD. Now, CVD just describes a disease of the heart or blood vessels. One of the key ones we're going to know about is atherosclerosis. Now, atherosclerosis is just where your arteries have hardened and narrowed. So what we actually see is if we look at this little series of pictures here, the first one is showing us a normal artery. So you can see nice and clear blood can flow through, no issues whatsoever. What happens in the atherosclerosis is we start to have these deposits of fat along the edge here, which means we're narrowing our artery and eventually it can actually completely block it. So every time that we deposit more of this fat in the walls of the arteries, it's going to make them narrower so less blood can flow through and it's going to harden them so they can't have that same stretch and recoil that they normally do. We've got some other causes of cardiovascular disease as well. We can have blood clots, which are referred to as a thrombosis. If a blood clot occurs in certain areas, it can be very problematic for us. For example, if we get a blood clot in one of the coronary arteries, and they're the ones that actually supply the heart itself with the oxygen and glucose it needs, then you're going to get a heart attack. If it occurs in the artery that supplies your brain, that would lead to a stroke. So do remember, coronary arteries are the ones that actually provide your heart with oxygen and glucose. So a blockage in those means you're going to get a heart attack. So what are some of these risk factors for cardiovascular disease? First of all, if you have a diet with large quantities of salt in it, then what we're going to find is you're going to draw more water into your blood and therefore get a higher blood pressure. Secondly, high saturated fat diet, that's going to lead to cholesterol being deposited in your artery walls, narrowing the blood vessels, restricting the blood flow and increasing the blood pressure there. So this is where we're eating large quantities of butters, red meats, etc. So obviously there we've got a couple of key problems. 
What can we do about it then? Well, first of all, we can take regular exercise. So one of the steps we can take to mitigate the risk of cardiovascular disease in our future is exercise regularly. Reasons that helps, because you're going to have a lower body mass, because less of the food you're eating is stored as fat, so that's reducing CBD and diabetes risk. If you're carrying less mass, then you're going to have much healthier joints and therefore lower risk of arthritis later in life. And you're going to have greater muscle tissue, which is going to lead to things like a much stronger heart, because your heart is a muscle at the end of the day. We can make some lifestyle changes as well to reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease. So eat less processed food, cook fresh more, because processed food tends to have a lot more salt and the saturated fat side of things in them. Regular exercise, we've already mentioned, reduce your alcohol consumption, stop smoking. If they were to ask you, they'd give you a little scenario about someone and ask how they could reduce their risk of cardiovascular disease, have a look. Obviously, don't say they should stop smoking if they don't smoke in the first place, but look at the information they've given you if they've not told you anything, they just ask, just give general lifestyle changes we could make, then any of those is absolutely brilliant. If we're in a situation where we've not managed to control all of these things and we do find ourselves suffering with cardiovascular disease at some point in our life, there are treatment options available. First step is usually going to be medication related, and there are four different categories of medication. I wouldn't suggest you need to learn any of the side effects of them, but know the names of them and the basics of how they function. So statins reduce blood cholesterol by preventing it from forming. If we don't form cholesterol, we're not going to get it deposited in our arteries. Antiplatelets reduce the stickiness of the platelets so there's less blood clotting. So obviously this one would come into play if you are more at risk of clotting of your blood. Beta blockers. These block the effects of adrenaline, so it slows your heart rate, improves blood flow around the body. And nitrates widen the blood vessels by relaxing the blood vessel walls, so again, lowers your blood pressure there. If medication isn't enough, there are surgical options available to us. The simpler surgeries, if there is such a thing when talking about, obviously, cardiovascular surgery, we can replace valves. So if there's an issue with a valve in your heart, for example, we can actually replace them. So that, that means that if we were to have a faulty valve, you'd have mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. It wouldn't be as efficient at getting the blood around the body with the oxygen. Replace the valve, it makes it more efficient once more. We carry out a procedure called an angioplasty, which is where we insert something called a stent into one of these partially blocked arteries. Now, the stent is pretty much a little mesh tube, if you like, that's made of a special material that as it warms up in the body, it then expands out. So as it expands, it forces the artery wider and therefore you've got a better flow of blood. More serious, if that's not going to work, we may need a coronary bypass. Now, this is obviously where we're getting into way more serious surgery at this point, because we're going to take blood vessels from somewhere else in your body and then literally create a bypass around the blocked coronary artery. So we're literally looking at obviously surgically bypassing a blockage in the arteries around your heart. If that's still not good enough, then the most extreme version is an entire heart transplant. So obviously there we would have to wait for the right match for our tissue. We would have to make sure that obviously we get it to the person in time and that's not always easy because obviously heart someone else has to die for it depending on where you are in the world it may not be viable to get it to you in time before the heart is no longer actually viable so heart transplants are a last resort and they're certainly not perfect a lot of people will die while waiting for a heart transplant so it's far better to take those steps in our lifestyle changes to avoid cardiovascular disease in the first place as always, if there are bits you want to look over in a bit more detail, use the B6 playlist on the main channel, use your revision guides, and I always recommend having a look at some of those paper two biology papers before the exam as well. Just get a feel for the kind of questions that are going to come up. And then of course, don't forget to join us for our daily booster tomorrow.